Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are at the start of our journey asking the most important question first, which is what is the Google Cloud Digital Leader? So uh, the Digital Leader is a fundamental or a foundational cloud certification that introduces you to the core concepts of cloud and Google Cloud in particular. So this certification will demonstrate a person can define and understand digital transformation, cloud concepts, core services such as compute, storage, databases and networking, security and cost management uh, for fundamental mental certifications, they like to always put a bit of emphasis on security and cost management. And for the digital leader, there's a lot of talk about digital transformation, which is a uh, industry term, but Google uses it quite frequently, not in the exam questions themselves, but uh, something we'll have to understand. The certification has no known course code, so I'll be calling it the GCP CDL. Uh, this is the first certification you should obtain uh, in your uh, learning journey, uh, and I'll show you in the next slide uh, why that is. Um, this is an easy course to pass. However, it is more challenging than other fundamental certifications, so we'll spend uh, quite a bit of time uh, just describing it compared to other uh, fundamental certifications. So here is the GCP roadmap. As you can see, there aren't a lot of certifications for GCP, which is a, a good thing because it's very focused. However, um, it's a bit laid out differently in the, uh, in the fact that they have professional certifications and these are not necessarily difficult. So uh, when you see a professional certification for AWS, you know it's really hard, but uh, some of these or most of these are like the difficulty of an AWS associate, which is a bit odd. Uh, then they have an associate tier where they only have a single certification. And then we have the new uh, foundational certification, the one we're looking at today, uh, the uh, Cloud Digital Leader. I've also divided this here. Um, we have the professional and I these are also professional certifications here, but I kind of treat these as specialties and that's what this line indicates, okay? So uh, in terms of your learning path, you should start with the Cloud Digital Leader, uh, and especially for um, GCP, just because of the way they write the questions, it's so different from the other providers. I strongly recommend that you get comfortable uh, with the Cloud Digital Leader. Uh, very common to go for the Cloud Engineer, and after that, the Cloud Architect. The Cloud Architect is like the Solutions Architect Associate of GCP. Uh, I mean, it's harder than the, uh, the Solution Architect Associate, but it's not hard overall. Um, and it's not as uh, uh, code heavy or technology heavy, it's more concept heavy. Uh, from there, you can move on to the cloud developer or the DevOps, just depends on your specialty. And then in the specialties, it's up to you what you wanna do. Collaboration engineer is a very unusually named uh, certification. This one in particular uh, is, um, it's like administration. So like it's, uh, you know, setting up your organization and, and networking. It's a very odd name for a certification, um, but they have it there. Uh, if it was me, if it was me going into the specialties, I'd either go for the cloud security engineer, data engineer, or machine learning engineer, cloud networking. I don't know how useful that is. Neither is the collaborator. Okay. So how long should I study to pass the GCP CDL? So if you're new to GCP, you're looking at 24 hours of study. This is longer than what I generally recommend for study times for uh, fundamentals, but uh, because the exams are uh, more difficult, and we'll talk about that in a moment, that's why it's higher. If you've already passed the uh, certified uh, AWS certified cloud practitioner or the Azure fundamentals, you're looking at a 15 hour study time. Um, you know, there is a lot of tra transferable information, but again, it's the fact that their exam questions are uh, uh, more difficult. If you've uh, passed either the Solutions Architect Associate or the Azure uh, um, Administrator, you're looking at a very short study time. You'll be uh, uh, able to knock this out in a few days, okay? So my recommended uh, study time is one to two hours for 14 days. Uh, generally with the AZ-900 or the uh, Certified Cloud Practitioner, I would say just book it by the end of the week. For this one, you need a little bit of extra time. So if you want to uh, book the exam to have confidence and make sure you're gonna commit to your studies, I'd say book it 10 days, 11 days, or even 14 days in advance, okay? So how does it compare against the, the AWS uh, Cloud Practitioner and the AZ-900? So the uh, we'll use the Cloud Practitioner as the baseline for our fundamental certifications because it was one of the earliest ones. It's also one of the like the best uh, written ones, okay? Uh, then we have our Azure Fundamentals, the AZ-900, and then the Google Digital Leader. So 
baseline is going to be one, right? And so the CLF CO1 is the easiest fundamental certification, still is today. It has straightforward uh, services. It has straightforward questions, well-written questions. And that's what makes it so easy uh, to pass and to grasp uh, cloud fundamental knowledge. Uh, for the Azure Fundamentals, uh, this is the AZ-900. It's a bit harder than uh, the Certified Cloud Practitioner uh, just because Azure's services are a little bit more muddled. Azure likes to, or Microsoft likes to, uh, meet everyone's demands, and so they really tack on a lot of stuff, but that uh, adds to a lot of confusion, uh, whereas AWS is very isolate services. Uh, the questions are slightly more difficult, just the way they word them, and so I'd say it's 1.5 times harder. When we're looking at the Google Cloud, um, or the Cloud, Cloud Digital Leader, it's three times harder uh, than the Cloud Practitioner. And I believe that this was actually by design because I think that um, a lot of people think that, well, because the Cloud Practitioner is very easy, um, that it, it doesn't hold a lot of value. So uh, GCP decided to just make this harder. I don't really agree with that approach, but that's what they did. Um, now, the services in GCP are probably the easiest to learn out of all the providers. They're very, very straightforward. Uh, but the questions are presented in a business-like scenario. So it's a lot like the Solutions Architect Associate exam. And that makes it a lot harder to, um, uh, to study for because you'll have to spend more time with practice exams, okay? Uh, and there are some services where you'd expect additional knowledge. So one example would be um, cloud storage where you have to actually know the the, the tiers of cloud storage is something that you wouldn't see like AWS with S3, you wouldn't have to know that. Uh, and so there's those kind of stuff. Another thing is they just have a lot of tricky questions or poorly worded questions. I'd say out of the three, they have the worst written uh, exam questions. Uh, now to say that doesn't mean you shouldn't go get the Cloud Digital Leader. I have this course here for a reason. I believe there's a lot of value here, but you just have to understand that, uh, you know, there's trade-offs depending on what you do with all these things, okay? So uh, where are you gonna take this exam? Well, uh, you can take it in person or in an online uh, from the convenience of your own home. Uh, with other providers, it usually use PSI and Pearson View, but Google uses Criterion. And actually the exam experience was really good. I liked it out of uh, every single um, um, online proctor system I've ever used. Criterion is great. I don't know if they're switching over to ProctorU. Uh, they were using it for the G Suite certification um, prior. And so I don't know if they're going to switch providers. It's, I'm not really, uh, I've read it at one place. They said they were, but now they're not. I, so I don't know. But anyway, if you are going to use Criterion, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, if you've never heard the term proctored, it just means that there's somebody or there's a supervisor monitoring you, right? So even if you take it online, what they'll do is they'll ask you to like, uh, at the start of the call, they'll say, okay, show us under your desk, all four walls, make sure you're not cheating, right? So they're there to monitor you, okay? And a proctor is technically also in person, but a lot of times we say proctor exams, we're referring to the online exams. So what does it take to pass the exam? Well, you gotta watch the lecture videos, memorize key information. You're gonna need to do hands-on labs and follow along within your own GCP account. Now, this is the thing. Um, if, you read the, if you read the requirements for GCP, they say you don't have to do any follow-alongs. And that is a 100% total lie. So. Uh, it's just like, there's no way, there's no way you'd pass without doing follow along. So I put in some follow alongs to help you cement that knowledge in this course, okay? Uh, do paid online practice exams. Normally for um, fundamental certifications, you can get away with not doing them. So like the AZ-900 or the Certified Cloud Practitioner, it's that easy. But in this case, you absolutely 100% need practice exam questions because just the way they word them, they're so hard. And uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm the only provider that I know of that actually have these questions because um, you know I took the exam the day it came out and I was the first to make sure I had uh, a lot of questions, okay? Uh, so this, again, this is harder. This is very hard to pass without practice exam questions. So, um, you know, go on the platform, sign up, and uh, help support more free courses. Um, but if you do pass without using uh, practice exams, I'd love to hear, uh, like, uh, you and, like, how much extra time you had to study, okay? Uh, for the content outline, uh, here's another oddity that they don't do is they don't break down each of the domains. Uh, usually you'll have a percentage here saying like, okay, you're going to get 20% of questions of this. So we know where to focus our time, but Google doesn't do that. Uh, so we'll just read through the domains here. So setting up a cloud solution environment, planning and configuring a cloud solution, deploying and implementing a cloud solution, ensuring successful operation of a cloud solution, configuring access and security. Uh, and the distribution of these domains are not known. We do not know what they are. However, on the marketing website, they said the following. They said, well, general knowledge, general uh, 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 Google Cloud knowledge and 
Google Cloud Product Services, this is what the breakdown is. This is not very helpful because, I mean, we need to know what these are, right? Because this is what they're testing us on. There's a huge breakdown for this. Uh, but I mean, I, I guess you kind of get the idea. So um, do, do I think this is reflective? Yeah, sure, I guess so. Um, in terms of grading, you just have to get a 70% to pass. It is uh, scaled like most other courses, meaning that it's not always uh, exactly 70% to pass, but generally that's what it's going to be. In terms of the type of questions, you'll get 60 of them, so you can afford to get 18 wrong. There's no penalty for wrong questions. The format of the questions are multiple choice and multiple answer. I think I only saw one multiple answer like out of the whole course, so it was mostly multiple choice. Um, which is great, but again, the questions are, the, the actual body of the questions is the hard part, okay? For the duration, you get 1.5 hours, you get additional time. A lot of other providers give you only an hour, so I really appreciate they gave me extra time. I cleared it within 30 minutes, but I imagine that if, you know, if, if this is your first time, you'll need that full time. Make sure you utilize all of the time when you're taking that, uh, when you're taking the exam. You're gonna get 1.5 minutes per questions. Other providers would only give you one minute per question. So the uh, exam time is 90 minutes. The seat time is 120 minutes. Seat time refers to the amount of time that you should allocate for the exam. So that includes time to review instructions, show online proctor your workspace, read and accept the NDA, complete the exam, provide feedback at the end of the exam. Uh, and so you do want, to, if you're taking it online, you have to show up early, okay? And be ready, make sure your laptop is plugged in. Uh, this is actually valid for uh, three years, which is great. Um, AWS used to have them for two years. I think they extended the CCP to three years. Azure is, they're just good forever. Um, but I like this thing where it's just three years, but there you go. So that is um, the introduction here. And what we'll do is we'll go take a look at the actual exam guide. So I can just kind of talk through some of the things there, like what I thought actually uh, showed up on the exam as opposed to uh, didn't, okay?